بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله تعالى على سيد المرسلين وعليه وصحبه أجمعين وبعد In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, we praise Allah Azza wa Jal and we send peace and blessings upon the seal of the prophets, the best of those who came to give the message from their Lord and his family and his companions, all of them to the day of judgment. And we greet you with the greeting words of paradise, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The month of Ramadan is a great blessing to the Ummah of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. The month of Ramadan is a time of reflection. It is a time for Muslims to take account of themselves and to deal with the reality of the life that we are living in today. For many Muslims who read Islamic history, and now is the chance in Ramadan for us to go deep into our history. For many Muslims, it is hard to come to grips with the glory of Islam and the present condition of Muslims. But we need to consider the words of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu not just as words that we read in a classroom or something that we memorize in special circles, halaqat al-ilm, but we need to look at these words as the truth, as the reality which even in this world today is affecting Muslims. One would say, look at the ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at the conditions that we are living under. What could the Prophet Sallallahu have said about this? In an authentic hadith reported in Abu Dawood, the Prophet, peace be upon him, has informed us, Ummati hadihi ummatun marhuma, laysa alayha adabun fil akhira, adabuha fid dunya, al fitin wa zalazul wal qatl. The Prophet, peace be upon him, has told us, this, uh, my nation, is a nation that has mercy on it. Its punishment is not in the next life, but the punishment is in the dunya. It's in this world. Fitan, zalazul, qatl. Fitan is the plural of fitna, a trial, a temptation, a confusion, a punishment. And so the, the, the punishment of this uh, ummah is not in the next life. It's here with trials and, te and temptations that we see happening. Number two, zalazul, earthquakes. And in the past 20 years, a survey was done to look at the earthquakes of the world and the scientists have found the majority of the tremendous earthquakes have struck the Muslim world. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, has shown zalazul, natural catastrophes, would also strike this ummah. And finally, qatl, that we would be killed, we would be murdered in large numbers. And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not speak from himself. And we need to consider in the month of Ramadan our position. We need to reflect upon the history of Islam and what happened to Muslims in the past because the same contradictions could be happening today. In the year 589 after the Hijrah, after the death of Salah al-Din al-Ayubi rahimahullah, where the Muslims had been united, political divisions started to come in. Corruption started to come into the Muslim world. Greed started to come in where the leaders, instead of giving the wealth to the masses of the people, they kept the wealth for themselves and they lived in tremendous splendor. At that time, a punishment came upon the ummah. Famine, death, stalked the land. Internal fighting went on. An earthquake struck Nablus and 20,000 people were crushed in their homes. In Baghdad, at that time, which was probably the richest city in the world, the Khalifa and his people were living in such uh, uh, amazing wealth that it is hard to even calculate the amount that they actually controlled. It is said that the slave of the Khalifa, Allah ad-Din al-Tabarasi, a zahari that his crops would give over 300,000 dinars per year. This is the slave of the Khalifa. But the great scholars who were teaching in the Islamic universities only received 12 dinars per month as their pay. In 644 after the Hijrah, it is reported that on the day of Eid, 
the royal procession was so large, it was so long, that it held up the Eid all day. It was their habit that they would not start Salatul Eid until the Khalifa himself and all of his retinue would come and sit, and then they would start the Eid. On that day in the year 644 after the Hijrah, they did not start Salatul Eid till just before midnight. All day, because of the thousands of people surrounding the Khalifa to come in. They would bow down to their leaders. And the rich were in love with sensual delights. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, in his Al-Bidaya, wa Nihaya, covers the events. Ibn al athir in his Tariq, in his history, also covers the events. And it is said that between the year 640 and 643 after the Hijrah, no hujjaj went from Baghdad to Mecca. There was no covering for 21 days because the Muslims did not want to spend the wealth on the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The cavalry of the Khalifa was only 10,000. The Muslim countries, instead of uniting themselves under the leader, were broken into nation states. Each nationality, each sultan in his area defending himself. It was at that point, far into the east, that emissaries came from a high land in the east. They came into the Muslim world. And the Muslims, being arrogant at that time and not humble as believers, killed the emissaries, disgraced the people who were coming with the message. And the leader of this group went to his sun god and prayed. And then he unleashed his forces. He was, his name was Tamarjin, and he was known as Genghis Khan. These were the Mongols, al maghul And they unleashed a punishment upon this Ummah that we have not seen and may not see until the day of resurrection. And so they came from the north down into the Muslim world, killing, destroying hundreds of thousands in Samarkand, in Bukhara, in Ray, in Hamdan, going down into Persia, down into the central lands of Islam. Everywhere that they went, they would not respect human life. They would destroy the books, destroy the institutions. They would kill the weak. They would murder the defenseless. They would pile the heads of the people into huge mountains. Well, iyadu billah. Muslims at that time were living in fear. And the Mongols continued to come, taking hashish from out of India and giving it to the people as they went along. They came into the area of Baghdad, into the Khilafat. And they, at that point, challenged the very might of the Ummah of Muhammad Wasallam. But where were the Muslims at that time? The contradiction existed. We had great wealth, but we did not spend the wealth on the poor. We had the ability to develop strong armies, but we did not defend the weak. We did not develop ourselves in the way of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Our leadership, our Khalifa was only a shadow of a man. He was only a shadow of the leadership that came from the Khulafa al-Rashidin and from all those great leaders of Islam who had led after the time of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And so the contradiction was there. <clears throat> At the time of the contradiction, the punishment came into the Ummah. And it reached the point, well, Iyadu Billah, that the Mongols came into Baghdad and they destroyed much of the city and they killed hundreds and thousands of people and even the leader of the Muslim world, well, Iyadu Billah. The Tigris and the Euphrates, it said, ran red with the blood of believers. After that, they destroyed the great books of Islam, took the books from the major libraries of Islam and threw them into the Tigris and Euphrates. And the Tigris and Euphrates turned black with the ink of the scholars. And so, at that time, the hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was coming to pass. 
it was a time of contradiction. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, had said, Ummati hadihi ummatun marhuma. Laysa alayha adabun fil akhirah, adabuha fid dunya, al fitan wa zalazal wal qatl. This my nation is a nation with mercy on it. Its punishment is not in the next life, but the punishment is in this world. Trials and temptations, earthquakes, and being killed, killed in large numbers. And so it came to pass, it came to pass that the believers would face a terrible trial, a terrible fitna. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, did not speak from himself, but the message of Islam was clear and the believers did not follow it. So the trial and temptation that came in the time of the Mongols, in the time of al mahul was a fitna for the whole of the Muslim world. The dead coming out of this terrible genocide actually affected the other countries. And the Mongols continued on. Their trial and their temptation was in a sense a form of purification. And Genghis Khan and his sons Hulagu Khan and the other of those Mongols considered themselves in a strange way to be the punishment of God on this earth. And so we need to consider this in the month of Ramadan. We need to consider the wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to this nation. We need to consider how we are spending this wealth, especially in the month of Ramadan. We need to consider how we are spending our time in the month of Ramadan. Are there poor people in this ummah? Do we have in the desert regions of Africa Muslims who are starving to death? Do we have in Southeast Asia Muslims who are suffering of disease? Do we have in European countries Muslims who are in need of protection? It is important for Muslims to come together and to understand the benefits that Allah has given to this ummah and to recognize our responsibility as a nation of peace, as a nation of justice, and a nation that defends the poor within it. And so the contradictions again are upon us, but there is a way out. Shahr Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, is a time of remembrance, it is a time of mercy, it is a time of reconstruction that we can look within ourselves and start again. May Allah give us the strength to follow His path, to renew our belief, to renew our vigor, to practice Islam. I leave you with this thought. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.